last decade. Well, I've been teaching for 15 years. So I guess I've seen, you know, certainly in the last four or five years, I don't know, 10 years, I don't know, but definitely the last four or five years I've been watching uh, my ad list grow, waiting list, so that generally in the last couple of years, two, three years, I've been having anywhere from 20 to 40 students trying to add outside every class. So basically that means I could create an entire new section for each one of the four or five classes I taught. So I'm turning a lot of people away. Boy, I don't even want to look at 10 years down the road because things change so quickly. I, I think that the nature of higher education itself is going to have to change because nobody can afford for it to keep going in, this, in the same manner. And I think there's a lot of innovation out there as far as looking at online education, you know, education for the masses. Personally, my own feeling is that that's going to degrade education <clears throat> and eventually it might end up that only the very rich again can go to a traditional educational facility because only the rich are going to be able to afford it and us poor masses <laughs> right we can go online and get some semblance of information transfer Yes, there is. Uh, there's certain there's niche groups of students as well that um, probably are more vocal about it than others. Um, but I think overall, it's even the any random student, just every time they get the message that their tuition's going up or that their units are being capped again, there's just an overall feeling of like, oh, the administration's out to get us. Um, and that because I have such a close relationship with the administration, I know for the most part, that that's not their thought process when they're making these decisions. Um, even our campus administration is reacting to our chancellor's office, which is above our university president, and even our chancellor's office is reacting to the state legislature. And then even on that level, they're reacting to the, the national budget crisis. So everybody's really just in a reactive mode. When they opened the door, there was a rush through the door of some of these students who started, a couple of them started, you know, addressing loudly the uh, president and the board of trustees, and they, it appeared like they called the meeting. It, when the people rushed in, I heard the, the sound cut out on the mic, so I couldn't hear exactly what happened. And then about a minute later, um, I heard screams, and I ran out in the hallway, and I could see all these people staggering out who had been pepper sprayed. So there's different, you know... Most, most of the students I've talked to claim that there was no warning, that the, that the officer just discharged a pepper spray without warning. One thing that happens is it becomes survivor, uh, survival of the fittest, doesn't it? Those students who are willing to stick at it and spend that extra year getting through their classes and not giving up are the ones that are going to make it. Um, so, I mean, that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is it's left so many people behind that uh, we need these people to be educated, you know. Um, so, yeah, they're getting frustrated, and so how are they showing this frustration? You know, we're the face of the problem. I walk into the class and they see me as the problem because I won't let them into the class. And that's how they see it. What, the way I see it is I can't let them in the class. This is... I'm, I'm being ordered, you can only let this many people in your class. Because we can't educate people if we're not getting the money to do it. We'll go, we'll go out of business if we do that.